So, you all know Tor, right? It's a really awesome tool for anonymous com communication, but sometimes, sadly, it just doesn't work for the use case you have. Maybe you need more bandwidth or something. So, this is what this talk will explore. Are there other options in the realm of anon anon anonymization networks? So, we have Eric here now. Um, a little bit different from what was announced on the schedule, but this is Eric now, and uh, he will give the talk how Alice and Bob meet if they don't like onions. Please welcome him. Hi, my name is Eric. Um, I welcome you to my talk. Um, I'm from the University of Hamburg, uh, from the group Security and Privacy, and there we have a long tradition in researching and to anonymization networks, uh, especially John Lunum, uh, where my professor, Professor Federer, uh, has some experience for over, let's say, 15 to 20 years. So let's have a look at the agenda for this talk. First of all, we do some basics about anonymity and strategies to achieve anonymity. We look at different adversaries, and afterwards we have a look at practical anonymous communication networks, especially at I2P, Freenet, GNUnet, and John Lunum. Afterwards, we only, for a short period, look into current research work, and conclude the talk. So, what is anonymity? Anonymity is uh, the state that uh, a being is not identifiable within a certain set, within a certain group, uh, the anonymity set. Here we see on the left side Alice, and she is within an uh, anonymity set of uh, senders who send the traffic uh, towards the, anonymi uh, uh, the ACN, anonymi Anonymous Communication Network. So the same is valid, uh, or, uh, the same is valid for Bob. He is within a set of uh, potential recipients, uh, and uh, therefore, uh, he also can achieve some recipient anonymity. Then there is also the option that both sides of the ACN are anonymous. In this case, we speak of sender-recipient anonymity. So, and there is also the property of unlinkability, which describes that there are some items of interest which an attacker is not able to sufficiently distinguish whether these two objects are linked or related to each other. We call this relationship anonymity if the attacker with the red hat is not able to distinguish whether the messages which are sent by Alice towards ACN and received by Bob, whether these are related or not. In this case, they can be linked, but there's also the case that they cannot be linked. And like this attacker, he can do some traffic analysis and uh, tries to recognize patterns in the size of the packets, or in the timing of the packets, or like uh, some aggregated measures, li like the, um, the bandwidth consumption of an uh, entire session, or uh, like uh, from the content of the messages. So, an important question when we talk about anonymity is who do you trust? And there are different strategies towards anonymity which try to establish trust. 
like for for example the the uh, the strategy of uh, cover traffic that uh, you send some r yeah, random traffic uh, to hide your uh, real content within. Quite successful is broadcasting messages that, that you send your message not to one recipient, but, but to a lot of recipients, but, but only the true re recipient, uh, let's say Bob, is able to decrypt the message. Then you can also use a trusted third party what is a, usually a VPN or a proxy, but you, you have to, yeah, it depends on your trust model. If, if you are fine with trusting your VPN, uh, yeah, yeah, then you, you can achieve some sort of anonymity this way. Then uh, later on, uh, we, we also have a slide for this, uh, like um, the shuffling and delaying of message, which uh, is done by mix or mixes or like uh, the anonymous remailer. And um, there are different anonymity systems that try to distribute trust, that you uh, do not have to trust a single entity, but uh, you can trust uh, like uh, different parties. Now they do it by using secure multi-party computation, that is a cryptographic scheme which is used in uh, the DC nets. DC stands for dining cryptographers. And then uh, cascades of mixes, uh, which are quite typical. We, we will see that later on. And onion routing and garlic routing, I'm going to show that also on an extra slide. So here we see the basic principle of a one-hop mix. We see that Charlie sends a message towards the mix, and Alice sends two messages towards the mix, and they have a certain order. The order is like uh, Charlie's message uh, arrives the first, and afterwards uh, Alice blue and uh, Alice orange one. And, uh, and the mix uh, can have like a threshold that he says, okay, I'm, uh, okay I'm, uh, I'm only able to cache uh, three messages. And then he shuffles the messages after the, the uh, threshold is achieved and sends them out in a different order and a different, uh, and uh, with some latency. Uh, so, yeah, and an attacker who observes uh, here the left and the right side has uh, some difficulties to link the, the messages to, uh, with each other. And then onion routing is explained on this scheme. I think if you are quite familiar with Tor, you, you might already know it. So uh, you, you have in the sender and the receiver, and Alice sends a message which is encrypted with three layers of encryption. And we, we see three nodes in the ACN, and uh, the purple or the message is uh, encrypted towards the purple node and the green node and the blue node. And uh, then while the packet um, tra um, propagates through the ACN, uh, the single layers of encryption are removed by the nodes. So uh, that uh, Bob is also getting the, the message as expected. So garlic routing, which is used by I2P, is uh, bits, uh, yeah, and there, there, there are some parts in common with onion routing, but there are also quite some stuff different. So first of all, in comparison to the earlier slides, uh, we, we have a peer-to-peer -peer architecture. That means that, that Alice, who wants to send a message, can also be used by other nodes, by other peers, to relay messages within the network. So uh, she is actively taking part in the ACN. Then uh, she has an outbound tunnel, w which uh, you see the, uh, with the blue li lines. And Bob has an inbound tunnel. 
So, so uh, what we see is uh, that uh, these tunnels or channels, they, they are unidirectional, uh, so ma messages can only go through in one direction. And <laughs> special uh, for garlic encryption is uh, that messages can be bundled uh, similar uh, like a garlic glove where, where you have like m multiple parts and so uh, Alice can end-to-end -end encrypt her message uh, to Bob uh, or like multiple me messages to Bob w which is afterwards saving some uh, bandwidth well, when Bob uh, acknowledged that he received the message he only has to send it uh, for one time and not m multiple times so, and uh, the, the black link uh, there uh, is like, uh, at, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's a connection between uh, like Alice outbound tunnel and uh, Bob's inbound tunnel gateway. Uh, that, that is like the first node of um, Bob's inbound tunnel and uh, this node uh, Actually, Alice uh, d does not know uh, the real identity or the real address of Bob. Uh, she only knows uh, his inbound tunnel gateway, which is the first node of the tunnel. <coughs> and between the, uh, these uh, nodes of the tunnel, uh, there's also onion, uh, onion encryption used. So let's uh, have a look at the adversaries. I think maybe you also know them from the, your computer science class. Uh, so and that there's an external adversary who is not taking part in the network, I can only observe the, uh, the traffic w which is going through. And then uh, we have the internal adversary which is uh, able to gather knowledge from the network, like which peers are participating, some encryption keys, or whatever he has access to. And he also knows which messages are forwarded this way. So then we have the passive adversary which is uh, j just looking at the things which are passing by, and uh, we have the active adversary, w which is uh, able to modify things, li like he can delete messages, he can modify uh, them, or s send addis additional messages. And then we have the local adversary, which uh, is only uh, present in a small uh, part of the network, or we have the global adversary, which is uh, yeah, controlling the entire network, or uh, often we use the glo global passive observer, uh, w which is like observing all the traffic w which is uh, flowing within the network. Okay, now let's go to the interesting part of the talk. Uh, so, uh, there... Uh, how uh, did we uh, select the networks uh, which uh, w w which we uh, surveyed? Like uh, we ha we had a look at w w what is there, and uh, we noted uh, or noticed that uh, there are a lot of uh, things w which are not, either not implemented or they are not functioning well, or and they, they are simply it's not practical to use them. And uh, we n noticed that uh, there are four networks w which are, except from Tor, there are four networks w which are qu quite, well, uh, quite easy to use. And uh, that they have some active development, which are Jondonym, Freenet, GNUnet, and I2P. And uh, later on, uh, yeah, uh, for, for the research project, uh, we, we just... Uh, thought, okay, what might be interesting that there are actually too many of them and then we just picked some which seem to be interesting to you. So, first of all, let's have a look at I2P. I2P is low latency, a low latency peer-to-peer -peer network with approximately 70,000 nodes. In comparison to the Tor relays, Tor has around about 7,000 nodes. And 
I2P, so it's uh, regarding the nodes, and every relay or every peer is also li like a node in this case. Uh, yeah, it, it's larger, but uh, Tor in general has more users, uh, a few millions per day. So uh, I2P it does uh, focus on hidden services. So it's not intended to use like legacy internet, like uh, you, you are not, uh, you, there, there are a few out proxies, so you, you can access some uh, normal websites, uh, which uh, like Tagesschau uh, or whatever, uh, but uh, actually it's not intended to be used in that way. So typical I2P applications are peer-to-peer -peer applications, which uh, includes like uh, file sharing and BitTorrent, uh, web browsing, then email instant messaging, IRC, and file storage. The community of I2P is quite active, and then they released during the last years, like every two, every three months, uh, their uh, a, new, a new release. So here we, we see how Alice and Bob are meeting on I2P. Here these bars are the nodes of the tunnel. And it's not necessary that, that there are just three nodes. You, uh, actually, everybody, uh, every peer can decide how many nodes uh, he wants to have or she wants to have. So we see, and, and the size of the bar shows you w w whether an encryption layer is removed or w w whether it is added. So we see that the outbound tunnel uh, removes uh, encryption layers, the inbound tunnel again adds, adds them, and we see that, that for garlic routing uh, we need like uh, two, uh, two uh, yeah, links. Uh, for, well, like every participant needs at least two, two tunnels, one inbound tunnel and one outbound tunnel for a successful communication. Similar to Tor, the lifetime of uh, a tunnel is limited, oh, uh, both uh, limiting the, the lifetime to 10 minutes. So I2P, uh, how, how does I2P solve the bootstrapping problem? Uh, boots, uh, peer to peer networks have uh, a problem of uh, how they find out who is act already participating in the network. So, uh, I2P and also Freenet and GNUnet, which we will investigate later, and they use or they download a public source. Uh, which is hard coded in the software, and there they download some active or a list of some active peers. And afterwards, yeah, and afterwards they can uh, take part in the network. Then, uh, special about I2P is uh, that every node uh, co collects a local statistic about all the other nodes. Uh, which is uh, used uh, l later uh, when he wants to build uh, his uh, his tunnel or her tunnel. Uh, that um, yeah, he, he can choose uh, to just use uh, the well-performing nodes to establish his tunnel. Then, uh, be beside the inbound and outbound tunnel, there are also exploratory tunnels uh, used in I2P, uh, which, are, um, which have the purpose uh, to build, manage, and destroy the other tunnels, uh, so that this can be done anonymously. And it's uh, being done by, by sending a tunnel construction request over the exploratory tunnel. And then if a, if a peer accepts to take part in this tunnel, then symmetric keys are exchanged. And after Alice found the successor of this node, she can send to, to this node the successor address for the tunnel. So how does Alice get the contact information of Bob? There is there are two data or especially two data structures uh, from, 
in I2P, which is the router info and the lease set. Uh, and the router info is uh, information about each peer, where uh, the public key is saved, the identifiers are saved, the contact information like uh, the inbound uh, tunnel gateway are saved there. And the lease set is uh, used when you uh, operate a service with an I2P, a hidden service, and then you can publish uh, these uh, inbound tunnel gateways. Um, uh, yeah, w which are called lease set. And th these information are um, uh, collected by super peers or flood fill peers, uh, as they are called in I2P. And uh, yeah, th this is a distributed hash table, uh, the network database or NetDB. So, I, I, to peer protects the information which peer operates a certain service and with some previous knowledge about Bob, let's say his URL, and you, you can contact him by his list set or you, you know some like his identifier and then you can request the net uh, DB and contact him. So let's have a look at Freenet. Freenet is also a peer-to-peer -peer network uh, it's uh, smaller, it has uh, around about 10,000 nodes, and it uh, focuses on distributed information, uh, information storage. So um, it's actively developed uh, since uh, 2001, and then uh, there is added an uh, optional friend-to-friend -friend top, uh, topology. So, you can decide whether you only trust your friends, and, uh, and, and it's like a whitelist, uh, uh, a whitelist to which peers you want to uh, connect. And typical applications for Freenet are file storage, static web page, chat, email, social, yeah. So let's have a look how Alice and Bob meet there. We see that there are no tunnels and there's also no onion encryption involved in Freenet. So it's like this. Alice asks her neighbor for a certain information and the neighbor, like, um, so she has a key for, for information she is lo looking for, and, um, and then the neighbor does not, in this case, does not have the information, and the neighbor asks his next neighbor whether this neighbor has the information, and the neighbor replies, no, I don't have this information, and um, then, again, the... Um, the, the next notes are asked, and uh, here we, we see, finally, after we follow all the links, we, we see that Bob uh, was the only one who replied that uh, he had this information, and with uh, link number 10, he is sending this information towards Alice, and he is not sending this information directly, but he's sending us, uh, this by the dark red and the green node. And what is special about Freenet, well, you might assume, okay, that this is rather ineffective. It would be much uh, more effective if you would send it uh, straight to Alice. But, but uh, by this, also a plausible deniability is achieved that uh, uh, like uh, the dark red node, uh, um, uh, like it's, uh, uh, he also gets uh, the information, and uh, the, then yeah, for, for an attacker, it's more difficult to decide. Okay, where did this information come from, and where did it has been sent to? Since also uh, a lot of other. Uh, nodes are getting this information, uh, the anonymity set, uh, the, like uh, the, the potential recipients um, is uh, in this way increased. And, uh, and the, this peer-to-peer uh, -peer network uh, does, uh, does distributed information storage, and if you request uh, information and it was, uh, the reply is successful, 
then the nodes on the green part, uh, they are caching that information. So that, that when Alice, for, for the next time, asks, uh, for example, the green node, uh, do, do you have this information? That, then this node can already serve this information. And by, by, by this method, this uh, information, which is uh, once uh, sent to the freenet, uh, is uh, like a censorship resistant cached by the nodes. And uh, like, like uh, if uh, Bob would, would be the publisher, he would have uh, no option to delete this message afterwards. Um, messages are only deleted like if they are if they are too old when they have uh, not been requested for a long time, and so the, the cache uh, the, the, they are removed from the cache. And uh, each node uh, in the freenet uh, provides uh, a few gigabyte uh, roundabout and, uh, to, to the network uh, to store uh, such information. GNUnet is uh, very similar uh, to freenet, uh, but, but uh, GNUnet, uh, there's also uh, some part, uh, there's a GNUnet foundation which also intends to develop an alternative network stack where you also have this hop-by-hop -hop architecture topology. So the primary application of GNUnet is also file storage and file sharing. It's similar to Freenet, but has an economically inspired trust model. So Relay is... It can uh, um, can de uh, decide wh whether they want to forward uh, a message uh, to to one node or to multiple nodes, and uh, there is also the option uh, to trade anonymity versus efficiency. Uh, identical to Freenet, there, there's also the friend-to-friend -friend, uh, option available, where you only trust the, the friends you already know. So have a look at how this works. Here where we say, see that Alice is sending a request to the purple node. And the purple node, like this is a pink link, the lower pink link, there this starts. And she, she is sending a request to the purple node. The purple node forwards this request to the orange node. And uh, what the purple node did is uh, that he replaced the reply address which Alice sent. Uh, Alice sent her own address at the reply address by the, the address of the purple node. We see that, that the orange node is not doing this, and then this is why the link is uh, purple. He, uh, he does not touch the reply address, and so Bob does send the message not to the orange node, but to the purple node. And in this way, we have, we have one one node uh, less in, in this path, and, uh, and in this way we can trade anonymity versus efficiency. So, Jean Denis, it's another network. It uh, focuses on legacy internet, so that there are no hidden services available within Jean Denis. Uh, Jean Denis is also known as Java Anon Proxy or YAP and uh, has been researched by, by the Anon project. So, and um, it's a mi mixed space ACN, and uh, um, special about John Denim is the provider model that, that and the, there's on the one side a premium service where user have to pay for it. For, for all the other um, networks, it's uh, for free. Uh, like uh, the usage of um, those networks is for free. Or you, you can choose also uh, to have a free access uh, to John Donim, um, but uh, there you only have uh, two relays or two hops uh, in a cascade, and um, for the premium model you would have uh, three. 
But and uh, what, what is different regarding the provider model is that uh, the operators are, are known and, and that they, they are approved by by, by the company John Nunum, and um, John Nunum has uh, 5,000 paying users. So let's have a look at John Nunum. John Nunum use uh, a few cascades, and uh, their path is uh, predetermined. So uh, either you use the gray cascade, the green cascade, or the black cascade. And uh, there, there's no other option uh, to, uh, li like by, by the sender, decide which route uh, he or she w wants to take, li like it would be possible in I2P and, um, and, and Tor. And John Lunum has two services and the info service, which is providing the user with some performance information about the cascades, how many users are using in this cascade, um, how many bandwidth is still available. Um, and there's the billing service. Um, yeah. And uh, w what is special about John Lunum is and the, that uh, there, the wall you see, and the, this is like, for, for example, the Great Firewall of China, that, 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 uh, you, you are, uh, and that somebody censors your connection and you are not allowed uh, to go, uh, you, to connect uh, to John Nunum. And uh, you see that uh, there, uh, above the blue dice, uh, and that there, is, uh, there are some black arrows, and this, in the GUI of uh, this uh, John Lunum application, you have the option that, that you allow other users uh, to, uh, that, that you share your bandwidth with other users in case they are censored. And so now the, the blue dice with uh, the arrows above, uh, is proxying the other user towards the cascade, and uh, so that they can uh, avoid uh, that censorship. Mm -hmm. So, um, because it's uh, quite unique to, to have, uh, have a payment service, uh, have a look at this. So, uh, you, you see and that uh, Alice uh, needs uh, to buy, buy some uh, traffic, and then uh, this information is uh, provided uh, to, to the mix cascade. Uh, the mi mix cascade uh, checks with the billing service whether Alice had uh, paid. And um, the billing methods are uh, like an anonymous pay safe card, or you can send uh, the cash by mail, but, but also some uh, not anonymous uh, forms like bank transfer is possible, which uh, might be not in the interest of somebody who wants to stay really anonymous. And um, yeah. So uh, l let's uh, compare the, these services or anonymity systems. So uh, we can state that of these uh, practical anonymity systems, including Tor, uh, none of these uh, protect against a global passive observer. But uh, since there's known revelations, we are aware, or at least since there's known revelations, we are aware that uh, secret services uh, cooperate with each other. So at least uh, there's uh, somehow uh, uh, a realistic threat that, 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 uh, that there exists a global passive observer. So. Then we saw that each ACN has also some method to resist internal, local, and active adversaries to, to some extent. And um, what is special for GNUnet and Freenet is that they additionally provide their host with plausible deniability in case and that they identified. Um, uh, compared to I2P and Tor, and there if you operate a hidden service uh, and uh, you are identified, and then, then yeah, uh, uh, it's it's more uh, you don't have plausible uh, deniability. So. 
Then uh, we, we can also compare by, by the use cases. We see that uh, if you want to achieve uh, sender anonymity and legacy internet, you can do this by Tor, John Lunum, and partially also by I2P. Hidden services uh, can uh, be, uh, or you, uh, if you want to operate a hidden service, you can do this uh, with Tor, I2P, Freenet, and GNUnet. Uh, then uh, for GNUnet, you, you have the option that uh, when, uh, or GNUnet and Freenet, uh, you, you can publish information and uh, go offline and uh, never show up in the network again, and the information remains there. Uh, different uh, case, like if, if you operate a hidden service uh, in Tor or I2P, uh, you have to stay online to send those information, which is also changing the attack surface in this regard. So, uh, then anonymous file sharing is uh, possible with uh, I2P, Freenet, and GNUnet, and um, yeah, uh, partially in Tor, but, but it's uh, uh, that they usually dislike it. So, but but um, for, for my impression, I got the impression that it's a quite a popular application with an I2P, at least. So, then uh, let, let's compare the provider models. And there we, we see, and, and the provider models is uh, finally the question, who do you trust? Um, for Tor, you, you have... Uh, uh, volunteers uh, who operate a relay. Um, for John Dunum, you, you have uh, like uh, uh, a few relay operators w which are s somehow uh, approved by John Dunum. But uh, yeah. And uh, for I2P, Freenet, uh, and GNUnet, uh, you have the fact that every peer which is participating in the network is also. Uh, a provider to, um, for the network. So then uh, other um, properties uh, we, we might compare is usability, size of the anonymity set, and, uh, and active community. In this regard, uh, certainly Tor is considerably, uh, considerably better th than the other alternatives uh, we investigated. So let's have a look at uh, some research work. There is uh, on the one, uh, oh, and there, there is, uh, as, uh, for example, the Anonext project, where the, they investigate the options of uh, zero effort uh, anonymity, uh, which uh, might be achieved by shuffling uh, of uh, IPv6 addresses. And this assumes that you trust your ISP, the internet service provider, and that he might provide you some anonymity. And uh, yeah. Then there is also some work going on in improving Jean de Nume. Jean de Nume is at the moment not, not a real mixed network, so they do, no, do not shuffle the messages for latency reasons. So, yeah, and there are ideas to have the, a real mixed net. Then, uh, if, uh, if we are application specific and only look at uh, messages, there is Vuvuzela as a research uh, project which uh, tries uh, to, to hide those messages and use a lot of noise uh, for, for this uh, to obscure the metadata. And uh, there is, uh, yeah, and uh, you see that, that the messages are sent towards dead drops. And uh, later they are, mm, they are retrieved by, for example, Bob when Alice wants to send it. And uh, this approach actually scales uh, quite well with, uh, with an increase uh, of the number of users. So uh, if you are interested in it, uh, you might have a look at it. And then uh, before two days, uh, there was also a talk about Lupix. Uh, Lupix has been presented this year. So it's an approach where, where they use some cover traffic and 
It's also mixnet based. And uh, at least uh, they aim to resist p powerful adversaries uh, s such as global passive observers and active attackers. Yeah, but uh, I think that they're. Uh, yeah, that they. Uh, it's, it's still uh, not an easy task uh, to achieve. So, and they have uh, the security goals of a sender receiver. Uh, Unlinkability, or the sender and receiver are unlinkable by a third party. Uh, sender online observability, so, so that uh, nobody can identify whether the sender is online or offline. And receiver unobservability. So, uh, my conclusion is that. Tor is good, but there are certainly other options which you might want to explore. Then there is no practical anonymity system out there which uh, actually resists a global passive observer. And yeah, if we want to achieve anonymity, this will not be possible without security. So. Uh, uh, I think it's very much appreciated if you go ahead and test this system, report bugs, and send patches uh, to improve them. And your participation in these networks does not only improve your personal privacy, but, but uh, you will increase the anonymity set and in this regard also improve the privacy of others. So, thank you. Thank you for this talk. So we have a good amount of time left for questions, so you can come to the microphones if you have one. So, um, yeah, I see someone at microphone four, so you can ask your question. Uh, thanks for your talk. Um, I've got one question for um, regarding GNUnet and um, Free, FreeNet. Yeah. Um, Oh, as far as I understood it, it's, it's quite similar to IPFS uh, in the respect that it's um, giving some, some uncensorable data which can be retrieved through the network. And as far as I have understood IPFS, um, that is achieved with a blockchain um, algorithm. How is it achieved in uh, the, the caching part in the, the other two networks? Yeah. Mm. Okay, we have a successful request, like the request is forwarded, and finally the link number nine, their neighbor sent this request towards Bob, and Bob has this information, and afterwards this information are stored by the nodes on the green line, on the green path, so that's a dark red node and the green node uh, are saving these informations. That, does uh, that, that answer your question? Or? Not really. Uh, is it, is it um, cached for, for eternity? Is it cached with a blockchain algorithm? Or is it cached for a certain time? And you said uh, that the, the provider of the information can go offline and the, the yeah. information will still be there. <laughs> so is it time limited? And, or? And, and the limit of the cache. Like, like when, when the cache is full, then, then he deletes those messages which are the oldest, like, or have not been requested for a long time. Sorry, can you please, if you're leaving the room, room be a bit more quiet so everybody who wants to focus can still focus on the questions? Yes. Is that question answered? Then I would ask the signal angel if there's anything from the internet. Uh, yes, there is. Um, would you prefer I2P over Tor for a hidden service if latency was not a problem? <laughs> and then that, that is uh, difficult. Uh, like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, like uh, there are uh, different security assumptions and uh, it's uh, difficult to uh, decide which system is more secure th than uh, the other. Um, so certainly uh, Tor is more actively developed and more actively researched and more actively tested. 
So and this uh, might be something which indicates that, that it's reasonable to decide to use Tor, but um, yeah, maybe it also depends on the specific service uh, which should be operated. But, but uh, no, no, yeah. Okay, so there are two people at microphone one, so have a go. Of the solutions you presented, how well do, this, do they scale? Or more specifically, would it be feasible to run all internet traffic on top of Tor hidden services or I2P? And would that actually make the internet a better place? Mm -hmm. uh, there. Uh, and then we, we can have a look at the provider model. Uh, mm. I, w I would say uh, that, that uh, Tor uh, requires volunteers to run the relay uh, to uh, pay for the traffic, and uh, this uh, that does not scale as well as if every peer which is uh, joining the network is also uh, uh, yeah, relaying traffic. It, it depends whether uh, Tor can uh, grow as fast uh, as uh, to to. Uh, scale that well uh, as um, yeah, I2P Freenet or GNU not may. All right, we have microphone three, I think, over there. Um, I was wondering, um, from what I understand, Freenet and GNU net act like some kind of distributed uh, store, and so senders are protected by the cache. Is there any way of having some kind of dynamic content in uh, these kind of networks, or do you know something which kind of mixes both? Dynamic contact is difficult. And that, that, that is uh, like uh, a reason to go to uh, I2P or Tor for, for these uh, uh, hidden services. Like uh, there you have static content, and, uh, but, but, but uh, and there are some uh, like uh, static websites, uh, like the free sites, uh, how they are called in Freenet. Maybe this uh, can uh, fulfill this purpose, but, but, but not, uh, not real dynamic uh, content. Okay, I see one more microphone one. Thank you. I think you mentioned that all uh, networks are vulnerable to global passive observer. Can you explain a bit more about this type of uh, vulnerability or this type of attack? Yeah. Uh, mm, let's see. Uh, like here, uh, actually, we. we if, if we can observe all links uh, in the network, yeah. if uh, we observe all links in the network, uh, th then we know exactly w w which network sent and uh, to, uh, or w which node sent the traffic to the others. And uh, we, if we observe this over a long time, th then uh, we, we can uh, dramas uh, drastically reduce the anonymity set. Because we see that maybe the Alice is sending the message to the, the first node, and the first node is maybe sending some messages to two, three nodes, and the, the, the next node is also sending the messages to two, three nodes. But, but over a long period, we, we can pretty well correlate these traffics. Is it practical now, or do you think? Uh, and, and Practical? Uh, for, for, for a global passive observer? Yeah. To, I, I don't know about the capabilities, but, but uh, like uh, for, for John Dunum, uh, where you have like very few relays, uh, uh, yeah, uh, let's say that they have 20 relays or something like this. And th th this is, uh, even if they are in different jurisdic uh, jurisdictions, it's uh, actually able for for secret service to observe exactly the traffic of 20 relays so um, it's certainly more difficult if uh, you have 70 nodes uh, 70000 nodes but, but uh, yeah uh, for, for some networks uh, it seems reasonable okay the signal angel again please um, Rafi wants to know whether you have looked into the rifle anonym 
Community Network by Knopf et Ali, which is currently still in a research project, as far as he knows. Did you get the question? Because I couldn't hear it well. Can you read it again, please? Yes, uh, sorry. Rafi wants to know whether you have looked into the Rifle Anonymity, Anonym, Anonymity Network by Knopf mm. et Ali. Yeah, uh, we, we looked into it, and uh, GNU uh, Rifle is a, a different approach uh, where they, they use uh, that uh, DC nets, uh, dining cryptography, um, no, cryptographer nets, and um, yeah, and they are actually um, because they use secure multi party computation, they, they can resist an attacker. Uh, if only one member of of uh, the of the uh, of of the relay, if only one relay is trustworthy, then then they can provide uh, the anonymity. So, yeah, th th this is also certainly interesting. And th th they also have another approach, which is called verified shuffle, uh, where you also can prove th that a shuffle really. Or that, that a mix uh, uh, shuffled uh, the uh, order of the messages. Okay, then we have microphone one. Hi, thanks for for your talk. Um, as part of the research, did you uh, look at um, uh, the resiliency to <coughs> sorry the resiliency to uh, censorship? I mean, in many places, many enterprises using these tools is considered a security risk. <clears throat> so did you give uh, uh, any attention to that as part of the survey? Which one of them is uh, more resilient or not? <laughs> yeah, OK. Uh, we, we can have a look uh, at it. Uh, like peer-to-peer -peer networks, uh, uh, I would say that they are very resilient. Then, because there are so many different uh, IPs uh, which uh, you or different peers which you connect, uh, that it's difficult for the sensor to censor all those uh, addresses. And uh, for, for the sensor, it might even be difficult to receive the information which peers are actually involved in this peer to peer network. So uh, there is no, not a list of all peers connecting or uh, which are involved there. Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, Tor, uh, <coughs> there the, the, the is the information of uh, of the relays, but there is also and there is uh, there also um, or like uh, the the list of relays uh, is public, but there are also uh, some secret. Uh, some secret, uh, they, they call it bridges, uh, where you can uh, achieve the, the access to, uh, to the network. So, so that, that is also... Mm -hmm. Then for John de Nume, we, we looked at it, like there another user is proxying that information to achieve censorship resistance. Yeah, and... Uh, Thanks. Yeah? So microphone four, please. Uh, did you look at the encryption algorithm uh, of all this network use, and what's your analysis, please? No, uh, we, we didn't, didn't lo look at all the details. So, Thank you. yeah, but, but uh, we, we looked like uh, some uh, use onion encryption or onion style encryption, others only encrypt from uh, hop to hop. So, yeah, but, but, but we didn't uh, look into uh, specific, uh, specific encryption ciphers or something like that. Hey, I see the internet has another question. Uh, yes, uh, Welp is interesting in, interested in what you think about research in the field of onion routing of a WebRTC. In terms of accessibility and possible spread, he finds it quite interesting. I think we need some clarification. <laughs> oh, okay. Can you please repeat the question? Uh, like yes. Um, it's uh, about the research in the field of onion routing over WebRTC. Uh, because the, the questionnaire asks, uh, thinks that this field is, in terms of accessibility and possible spread, quite an interesting approach. 
Actually, I didn't look into it, but, but I understand it like WebRTC, so that, that it's done within the browser? Or, yeah, but, but, but actually, no, I, I cannot answer that question. So. Okay, then microphone three. Uh, hello, you. My question is about you said that they're all uh, like they, they, they can, cannot defend themselves against a global passive provider, but how do they scale the probability that you can be found with the number of uh, with the number of contaminated nodes? Like which of those for which of those networks the uh, what is the max number of nodes that can be contaminated with you probably being like with you being 50% secure or something along those lines? <laughs> yeah. Okay, l l let's uh, try it that way. Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. Uh, y usually, if you have uh, this uh, setup, uh, that, that the entry node and the exit node, uh, like if you know that there are three nodes uh, within the route or within. Uh, on the path, uh, and uh, you know that, that the entry node and the exit nodes which are, you are using are malicious and uh, they are cooperating with each other. Then it's uh, very, very difficult uh, to, to have a pa traffic pattern which uh, do, does not uh, identify you. And uh, th this w would be uh, li like uh, valid uh, for, for uh, for um, Tor and uh, and uh, John Lunum. So, uh, and uh, for, for the peer-to-peer -peer networks, it depends on your neighbors. L like if I2P has 70,000 nodes, but, but uh, your, your neighbors are not malicious, so uh, and they still protect you. Um, in I2P, and there, uh, so since uh, the length of the tunnel is also not uh, fixed uh, or the, no, not specifically known, um, and uh, each each peer can de decide how long his tunnel should be, and then there it's uh, quite difficult for for an at attacker to know that, that uh, this attacker is the entry point and that uh, besides him is uh, the, the real entity, like um, besides him uh, is Alice. For, for an entry guard or for an entry node, uh, yeah, it's, it's more dangerous because uh, he knows that, that besides him is uh, like the real person. Okay, last person, I think, is that microphone one? Um, you talked about plausible deniability of GNUnet and um, Freenet. Um, can, can you say what you can deny and what not? For example, can you say that I'm part of the network or so? Yeah. Mm. Uh, like uh, you, usually, you, you you can uh, deny that. Uh, and then, uh, uh, okay, in, the, in this case, and uh, an attacker does not know whether you are the last hop and uh, whether you really receive this information or whether there, there's a hop afterwards. So, uh, if uh, you send this information to somebody, then he can deny, no, I only propagated or uh, transmitted this information uh, to somebody else, and this is uh, quite plausible. So, and if you have uh, the information, uh, then actually, uh, here, I would say, and then that uh, the green node does not know whether this information was hosted uh, by the red node or the blue node. So uh, just knows, okay, and this information was somewhere over there in the network and is now coming to me. Then uh, another thing w which I didn't mention, that uh, you store the information as, uh, as a peer, and uh, the information you store is encrypted, and uh, you actually do not know wh wh what is inside these files. 
So uh, you, you are storing information, but you can deny that, that you know that is, uh, it is a specific information. So uh, this is also something which you can plausibly deny. Okay, I don't see any more questions. Do you have another one? Or <laughs> I have another question. <laughs> um, you said uh, none of these networks uh, provide um, uh, protection against a uh, global passive observer. Um, for I2P, I think, if you have a service uh, like I2P Bote, where is no connection. This is, uh, do you know any attack against that? Because it says it can provide um, a protection against such attacks. Uh, okay, I2P Bote uh, is uh, li like the email uh, application. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, f for emails, it, it m m might be easier to, to provide this uh, because um, so sometimes you only send a single message and then uh, it can be possible. But, but if uh, li like you have a hidden service in I2P, and uh, you, you, are, uh, you, you are able to request some information from it and, and this is sending uh, the information to you, th then you can uh, correlate this information. But, but for a single message, it's sometimes more difficult. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I think we have answered all the questions. I don't see any more, and that also fits well with time. So thank you again for your talk. Yeah, thank you.